Okay, we're live. I'm welcoming cellist Matt Heimovitz along with Nadia Spachenko, say that correctly. Excellent. And we're going to talk about your new uh, recording. There we go. A few little technical things here and there. Um, let me check you guys, first of all, and make sure that uh, you're connected. Matt, let me hear from you. Yes, great to be with you, Brad. And Nadia, and let's Nadia. hear from you. Hello. Thank you for having us. Okay. I was just checking to see if I had my headphones connected or not. So we're talking about this uh, release that is happening today. It's kind of a, a celebration that we're releasing the album or the track, but it's also a moment of uh, remarkable unsurety, and it's a somber moment, a sober moment. And I wonder, Nadia, you are a Ukrainian pianist. You've done a lot of work uh, in this uh, effort to try to bring some relief to the Ukrainian people. Uh, you were born in Kharkiv. You're from Kharkiv. And uh, your father is still there, I understand. Right. Um, can you tell us a little bit of your story to begin with? Um, I was born in Kharkiv. I have lived there until I was 14 years old. And I have uh, gone back to perform there with orchestras in Kharkiv and Kiev and different cities in Ukraine. And um, when the war started, it actually started on my birthday. So tomorrow is my birthday and the two year anniversary of the war. Um, and actually it was the 23rd here, which is today. So I remember like it was yesterday, um, I was sitting in my studio and um, I heard that bombs were falling on Kharkiv and um, they haven't stopped for the last two years. Uh, it's happening pretty much every day. And um, at the beginning, especially every day I was learning that places that I cherished, that I had such personal and wonderful memories from um, from my childhood were destroyed, were bombed. Seen on TV, these buildings uh, getting blown up that I used to be near every single day. So it's been very difficult and I can't believe that it's been two years and uh, the war is still going on. So I've been trying to do as much as I can to support the Ukrainian people. So I released uh, a CD first called Invasion Music and Art for Ukraine. Um, uh, featuring music by Louis Spratlin and art by Ukrainian artists. And actually the painting you see behind me now is by Ukrainian artist um, Yurina Hulko. He might even be joining um, this live um, broadcast, but it's actually, I think it's very, very late in Ukraine now, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah. But artists actually responded to each piece on the album and they painted paintings um, to for each piece on the album. So the album featured a lot of artists who are actually who were in Ukraine and are still in Ukraine and who are fighting and who are not leaving. And um, the art included art by children in Kharkiv who were hiding in the subways and uh, from the bombs and were still making art at that time. So it was very personal. The project was very personal. And then um, I was able to raise quite a lot of money for humanitarian aid um, through different organizations, but mainly through Razum for Ukraine. It's probably the largest humanitarian aid organization. And then um, when I met Matt, I actually met Matt at Louis Pratlin's memorial because Louis Pratlin passed away uh, almost exactly uh, a year ago on February 9th, um, 2023. And we were invited to perform at his memorial and uh, Lou always wanted us to play together. And so we decided, uh, and Matt actually really wanted to record this piece, this very poignant piece by Silvestrov, and he will maybe talk about that now, the new release uh, that is coming out today. Um, so kind of Louis Spratlin brought us together. Louis Spratlin is connected to Ukraine and now we're trying to pay homage to Ukraine and um, let people know of Ukrainian culture and play Ukrainian music. So I, I will give it to Matt now to tell a little more. Well, um, it, it really is incredible to hear as we've been collaborating about, you know, we were trying to figure out a cover for the single and, and uh Nadia's father was going to take some photographs and he couldn't because, uh, you know, Kharkiv was being bombed that day. And, and I mean, it's, it's really quite, um, you know, it seems like we see, we, 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 we get normalized 
by all of this news and and I mean it's been two years that that this yeah. uh, you know that, that this country has been invaded really and um, you know I, for me it's a impressive discovery in terms of Ukrainian culture Ukrainian music Ukrainian art um, that part of the world for so many years it's been so fluid you, you know you think of someone like prokofiev who was born in ukraine but we think of him as russian you know and and so this uh, and i've been spending some time you know looking at the music of thomas de hartman and thomas de hartman was born in ukraine but then you know went to a military academy in leningrad and uh, was friends with Kandinsky and many Russian intellectuals. And there was, you know, th th of course, it was, a, it was a give and take. And um, hopefully one day we return to the idea that music and art um, transcends all and brings people together. But right now it's really critical that, that we celebrate and that we preserve, for one thing. It's an existential crisis, really, in Ukraine, you know, that we, that we preserve this culture and, and, and share it with the world. And so with this five minute piece that Nadia and I recorded in a studio in Los Angeles with the Sylvester of, um, this is, you know, one of the great Ukrainian composers alive today. He was in uh, Kiev, I believe, uh, when when the war broke out and I th he's in his eighties. Um, he, he was taken out. I think he's now in Germany, I believe, uh, still still composing, still working. And, uh, you know, this is music that is uh, just stunningly beautiful and, and just five minutes of peace and hope. And, um, and so it was really wonderful to, to work with Nadia on this and, and bring it to life. And um, it's also a piece that kind of, you, you can think of it a little bit as a metaphor because uh, he asks the cello often, to really listen to the piano sound and the piano timbre and to fit into this um, into this world and and so it, it it requires from both players a kind of flexibility and a um, you know the the players complete each other's sentences and and also it's really bringing two very different instruments together as one and and uh, and creating something very um, very holistic and and uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's a it's for us a, a therapeutic way <laughs> to to just be with Ukraine at this moment. Yeah, um, Matt, you described this piece uh, the by Valentin Sylvestrov as a metaphor for the power of music to unify in a divisive world. What what do you uh, and this is a question for both of you? What is the role? of an artist when it comes to world events like this? What do you think? I mean, obviously, you're both involved in some musical activism uh, here, also with beautiful music and raising awareness. But what do you think the overall role is for an artist when it comes to situations like this? And that's for both of you. Yeah, so for me, Right now, I feel like my goal is really to promote Ukrainian music and Ukrainian culture. So music is what I do. Music is what I love. Music is what I live for. And um, music is a means to bring joy to people, but also to bring awareness, um, to express feelings. And right now, of course, there is so much pain. I have so much pain and so many people, pretty much everybody in Ukraine, everybody who has family in Ukraine, or everybody who is even doesn't have family in Ukraine. I think all Ukrainians right now are really hurting. And um, music, art, you know, you know, we we speak through um, through music. We speak through the art, and um, we express our emotions. So in this piece, I really, for me, this piece is very nostalgic. It's like an elegy. Um, it's like an afterthought. I'm hoping that this is sort of like, it's, it's like a recollection of what beauty and what um, peaceful and beautiful country Ukraine was, but also 
Um, it has a lot of pain and um, wistfulness. And I'm also hoping that it's sort of like an afterthought um, after the war is over. So this piece to me, um, at least the way I was interpreting it, is very personal. And um, it allows me, first of all, to share with the world um, music by a Ukrainian composer, a composer who actually composed and lived in Ukraine his whole life. So he's um, really, I mean, his culture is, is really Ukrainian. He's, you know, he's dedicated his life to um, writing music that reflected the culture, reflected his experience, his background. So I'm just really excited to play music by Ukrainian composers. And I've been doing that a lot in my concert lately, not just by Silvestro, but many other, including living composers who live in Ukraine right now. Um, but I think you, music also can express something. So for me now, it expresses that I want to share with the world that Ukraine exists, that Ukraine is a beautiful country, that Ukraine has rich culture and uh, wonderful music, wonderful art. And I just feel like it's really important to share that art and that music with the world, especially given that Russian culture and Russian music ha has been very dominant um, for many, for centuries, pretty much. So I think uh, Ukraine's music has actually been overlooked. So I feel like it's my passion now to bring it to audiences around the world. You may hear a little bit of that music in the background right now. It's it's playing out the Preludium, uh, number three by Valentin Sevastrov. This is a recording that is released today, uh, and you can find that all over the uh, internet. I assume you can download that streaming. Let's it's listen a post, to a little. It's a post. Bit. It's a post ludium. <laughs> a post ludium. What did I say? Preludium. Preludium. Yeah, I, 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 okay. make that, I make that. So it's, it's after, not before, right? Yeah. Um, post ludium. Yeah. It's beautiful music. Let's listen for just a moment here. Can you hear that? What's going through your mind, Matt, when you hear that piece? From the first note, I it, it um, kind of time stops. Yeah, and and uh, I ju it just draws me in, and and um, I think you know, as music should. I mean, it. it we leave all of our worries and problems around us and just, just focus in on, on the beauty. I mean, there's just the, the sheer beauty of uh, the, the timbre that he creates between the two, the two instruments and, and, um, and also this unexpected, um, kind of a transcendent melody that, that, you know, is somewhat deconstructed, but but you realize as you're listening to it that it's uh, how beautiful, how beautiful it is. It's it's not easy to write a great melodic line. Not not many composers know how to do that. And yeah. this is really a stunning, stunning uh, melody that that goes from the cello into the piano. Uh, Nadia mentioned that you met each other at uh, Louis Spratlin's funeral service, that you performed on that. Um, was this a piece that you did? Yeah, I've been working also with, with Louis um, for years. He, um, and there are one or two pieces that have yet to be premiered, actually, that he wrote that are really um, very important works. So hopefully yeah. we'll be able to do that soon. But um, the latest collaboration with Lewis right before he passed away was uh, he Lewis wrote a piece uh, for solo cello for the Primavera project, a collaboration that I'm working on with an artist, Charlene Van Heil and um, director Jeffrey and Young. We're commissioning 81 composers to engage two paintings. So there's another painting theme there. Um, 
this the, the painting was the Primavera of Botti, Sandra Botticelli, which is in Florence at the Uffizi, and Charlene's painting is in storage now, but it was at the Venice Biennale, and so many hundreds of thousands of people got to see that painting for, for a year uh, while, while it was up at the Biennale. And Lewis wrote a piece um, called Two for One, and in his inimitable way, he he kind of took us on a tour of the two paintings in a very in-depth way. I mean, it's only a seven-minute piece, but he somehow went back and forth between these centuries and these two painters and the two paintings and and uh, really depicted the characters, the, the figures that were in the paintings from these different perspectives. And so you really, with that piece, two for one, Lewis, uh, yeah, it's, it really is a tour of the of the painting as a whole. Really, a thoughtful. I mean, he was a brilliant man, and and uh, you know, one of the great one of the great compositional voices. So it, it's a it's an important piece. But that's what I played at the memorial, actually, and and um, and then Nadia and I talked at the memorial, and and we we. Met, uh, figured out a way to get together in Los Angeles. And uh, in fact, we, we spent, we really enjoyed working on the Thomas de Hartmann Sonata, which was uh, from 1940, um, really major work, um, epic kind of 40 minute. It's sort of the other extreme of the Sylvestro. The Sylvestro is this like little microcosm, you know, in five minutes. And the Thomas de Hartmann is really sort of this grand, um, very ambitious piece. Uh, wonderful, wonderful piece for cello and piano. One of the great, one of the great sonatas for for cello and piano of the 20th century, and uh, and also, you know, from that period where we find ourselves right now in this world of cycles of history, and and you know, around 1940, of course, and the the beginning of World War II, and and the rise of fascism, and all of that. So this is. Um, you know, we find ourselves in very extreme times and, and yeah. looking back at, and wondering how did, how did we get here again <laughs> to this to this point? Nadia, you made the recording Invasion music by Lewis Bratlin in, in 2022, I believe it was. And I, I wonder, did you think that the war would still be going on in 2024 when you made that album? I was hoping that it won't be. Um, nobody yeah. really thought that it was going to happen. It was kind of unreal that that, that happened. Um, and uh, Louis Pratton actually, he called me like immediately after the war started and he said, you know, I want to write this piece. You know, I want to just express my anger and just outrage as, as what Putin is doing in Ukraine. And he wrote it very quickly. Um, he basically had it, completed within the months of the war start and we recorded it very quickly as well in june of 2022 and we were hoping the war will be over soon um but this piece is actually expresses definitely expresses the the feelings that we are still feeling now and um that kind of that aggression and hopelessness but also hope the middle section is very hopeful uh, and um, wistful and uh, poetic and uh, kind of, to me, reminds of the beauty of Ukraine. Just I've kind of imagined the the landscape, yeah. the the fields, um, you know, the the plants, the, the flowers. Um, so that piece is definitely very meaningful. And when I was uh, performing at uh, Luz Memorial, I played selections from that album. I actually played um, rags that he wrote for me. And this painting behind me, uh, it's called Rag Time. It was painted in response to those pieces. And rags uh, that Lou wrote were responding to his memories from places that he loved, uh, where he used to spend a lot of time, where he used to hike to and spend summers in. And um, in fact, uh, some of the movements that I chose from, from rags, um, one of the movements is actually um, about uh, Pelham Lake, and that's the place where they spread his ashes. And I didn't even know that. But so it was very meaningful um, service for Lou, but also the connection, you know, to Ukraine of the peace and the pain.
painting and uh, Mads Primavera project is also based on the painting. So it had this great connection of art and music and basically what's happening. Alu was a big advocate for justice and, um, you know, fairness. And he was just such a wonderful person. Uh, Matt, tell us a little bit more about the, the Primavera project. I mean, it was inspired by Botticelli's painting, but, but we've talked about this before. You have a, a number of recordings of these new pieces coming out. I wonder if you can talk about yeah. that and if you can give us any more details about upcoming releases, that'd be great. Well, uh, yeah, Primavera for the Heart um, just came out two months ago. And uh, so four out of six albums for this project to, to encompass all 81. We're recording all of the pieces in Marfa, Texas, in the studio of Charlene Van Heil. She has this beautiful cathedral ceiling studio and the cello is very happy there. And, and that's where we've been recording. The, our producer, David Frost, is in New York and composers have been joining us from Philip Glass to um, Missy Mazzoli to uh, Nico Muley to, I mean, just so many, Tashan Sori. Everybody's joined us uh, via Zoom. We've had one composer live, I think. <laughs> I'm hoping maybe the next, the next album, actually, we're going to record in June. And that's number five out of six. And I've got most of the pieces, some really extraordinary. David Krakauer wrote a really fun sort of apocalyptic klezmer piece for solo cello and and uh we we have some some others that are that are really exciting and um so that's uh that's going to happen in june and hopefully we'll a few months later we'll release that and then we'll have the final the final album but really um we're also publishing these pieces for the next generation to start playing you know just broaden the cello repertoire and and start playing this music and um I'll start playing. I, I am playing them as often as I can, and and just getting getting the music out there, and and then we'll see. I think we'll have some fun because there are all kinds of themes that emerge. Each composer is doing something completely different. They're engaged to different aspects of the painting. You know, whether it's just a, a the spirit of the painting or the directionality of how we experience it, or the a specific figure, or a texture, or the nature. The Botticelli depicted hundreds of species of flora in his painting and Charlene von Heil uh, sort of reimagines that as well and has has some imagery and symbolism there so there's kind of an envir environmental theme but it you know again it's it's a project that emerged slightly before the pandemic but really took took on a life in the pandemic and so there is this sort of idea of rebirth renaissance um, cycles of nature, cycles of history, and just, you know, what we're, the, the path that we're on, you asked earlier, what is the role of, of an artist? And I think, I think that when you're faced with events outside of your control, I don't know how Nadia feels, but my, my first instinct is I, I get paralyzed, you know, I'm like, what, what is the point of doing what we do? Because you know, we're just trying to survive in these moments and and uh, it, it, it's hard to make sense of them. And um, I certainly felt like that. And, you know, after 9-11, there are certain moments, the pandemic, uh, when the war started with Ukraine, um, you feel a little helpless. And then you begin to, you know, like a any global citizen, you, you begin to think about how can I contribute? How can I, how can I bring hope? How can I, how can I uh, unify people? How can I um, also uh, really, really important uh, prioritize the arts in a time of, you know, I mean, just to be real, I mean, in Ukraine, they are in survival mode, you know, I mean, it's just yeah. uh, many people are just, you know, trying to find food and, and um and deal with bombings um and uh yes yeah, an existential moment for them so so that's what they're concerned about and at the same time we have to um as artists we have to uh continue to preserve and to to bring to life the, the culture because it you know there's a very important contribution to the world from this 
nation, and and it's uh, it's our responsibility to to uh, to bring that to life. Yeah, absolutely, and, and raising awareness, I think, through this lovely music is certainly interesting to folks. Um, I should mention that uh, people can leave comments, they can ask questions as well. And I want to encourage that. I'm also told that uh, we had a little audio problem on Facebook at the very beginning, but we will post this after the facts and you'll be able to hear the audio that way. Apocalyptic Klezmer. I've never heard that <laughs> word before. That's like a genre unto itself, right? <laughs> it is. It's really something. I mean, David Krakauer is just a wonderful artist and, and, uh, great great in the classical repertoire and tradition but also one of the great klezmer players and improvisers and and um yeah he went all out with that. i mean it, you know he wrote yeah. his piece after after um october 7 you know when when israel was attacked so mm -hmm. so he's he's imagining you know all kind both sides of just all these horrible leaders <laughs> all over the place yeah. who are ruining the world basically for the rest of us and, and right and, here uh, in the united states as well <laughs> <laughs> oh boy let's not get into it but yeah so yeah, so uh right. yeah i mean um yeah and he so it's it's like a tsunami basically this piece it's it's just uh you're really wild i do have a question from uh, uh zach swanson he's asking uh, Silvestrov is often quite beautiful. Could you speak a little more to how the cello and piano interact in this piece? And maybe Nadia, you being the pianist, you can talk a little bit about that. I feel like it's a conversation. It's a conversation. It's a reflection on um, our feelings of our kind of remembrance of events, um, sad events, nostalgic feelings, um, uh, reflecting on our experience. And the way that this piece works is it's kind of fragmented. So there is one thought and um, the piano starts and um, kind of with the thought and the cello takes uh, takes over and then vice versa. And then it's a short thought. And then, so then we stop and we listen and we think about it. So it's like this conversation where we say something very profound and and then we listen and think about it. And then we mm -hmm. say something else that's that's also profound and a reflection of what we just said. And then we listen again. So it's kind of like this exercise and listening to each other and um, responding to each other um, emotionally, uh, responding to each other in terms of color, the colors of instruments blending together into one. Um, and then just just really sharing our feelings and thoughts in a way that's just it's it's very unique, I think. You know, just the structure of this piece, just how it uh it's very free. So it it goes forward and then it it um the music kind of stops for a little bit, gives us a chance to reflect, and then it goes to a new direction. But at the same time, the piece is, is very poetic, I think. Um and so there's a lot of poetry, so you could think of you know, new um, poetry being written um, as you are creating the piece, you know, maybe you think in, in a very, you know, very artistic way, not just kind of mundane things that we think every day, but but really, really thinking about arts and the, um, the role of arts and the role of music in life and just kind of reflecting. And for me, I was reflecting really on my experience of of this war and and just just kind of what's going on in Ukraine and in the world and to me that was a great outlet um and the cello is just the way Matt plays is just absolutely astounding and his sound is is so beautiful and so his interpretations are always very deep and in this piece as well of course and just just being able to listen to that and just kind of be immersed in the music was very special yeah, and I think that speaks somewhat to what Matt said about the piece, kind of uh, having these pauses in time, you know, you sort of feel like there's a, a bit of a musical call response and a pause, you're almost there and you never quite get there. What, what do you think, Matt? Yeah, I was going to say exactly uh, that, that in a way you enter a different time world with this piece you know it's not measured 
as as we normally you know by seconds and minutes and hours it's it's um there's he, he's he's constantly notating actually a give and take uh, in terms of phrases tapering off and slowing down and then and then speeding up or and and so you have to find this thread this connection which you kind of enter the piece through timbre <laughs> through the two instruments you know the, the idea that that you know i'm really intensely listening to the sound this beautiful tableau that nadia is creating on the piano and i'm you know i i don't have a pedal on the cello like like she has so so i'm entering this this world that is atmospheric and and really uh let maybe dream like you know yeah. it's not it's not it's not real it's not our real uh, tangible world and so it's and and so you enter this whole different sense of time which is fascinating you know that that a composer can it seems very simple when you listen to it but when you look at the notation it's quite complex and very detailed and he's telling you all the time you know to push and pull and 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 so i think really the the challenge for us is to find one trajectory through through the through the piece you know that that holds together we it's our responsibility to hold it together and really so you're you're you you begin with this um melody that intertwines between the two instruments and and just continues but then unexpectedly towards the end it, you know the the cello plays these fifths on the on the c and g string on the low strings which are so desolate very unexpected because it's it's been this very hopeful piece and then and then all of a sudden you realize that uh something else is going on <laughs> here yeah. with with the, with the piece so um yeah please listen to it again and again <laughs> like all the all the way all the way through because um yeah it, it i love that about a great composer is that you know they take you to a place you didn't expect if you if 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 you i mean you know you look at beethoven <laughs> you know it's 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 always he always confounds or haydn or uh, any of the great composers i mean they they confound the expectations and yeah. even in this simple short piece silvestro is doing something very special well we're talking about the postludium number three that uh, you have recorded uh cellist Matt Heimovitz and pianist Nadia Shpachenko. I'll get that right eventually. Um, and that is available today. It's being released today. And uh, happy birthday to you, Nadia, a day early. I guess your birthday is tomorrow, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a lovely piece, and I hope that people will uh, definitely uh, use that as sort of a starting point, right? I mean, you both have done a lot as far as recording music uh, that preserves Ukrainian culture, that you talked about that a little bit. Um, I wonder if we can talk about some of your other recordings a, a little bit as we have this discussion. Um, Matt, you did uh, the cello concerto. You recorded that of Thomas de Hartmann, right? And okay. I was struck by uh, Dennis Russell Davies, which you're a conductor for that album, he is from Toledo, by the way. If you didn't That's know, that's right. Oh, uh, I'm going to let him know that I that I talked to you, Brad. <laughs> yeah, I, I've talked yeah. to him in the past, and I also used to be a singer, and I did some world premieres with him in the back in the day. So there, there's a nice connection there. Um, nice. I mean, you talk about De Hartman as uh, an unsung Ukrainian composer. I wonder if you can go into that a little bit, and we can actually play a little bit of the cello concerto. I've got the third movement. We don't have time to listen to the whole thing, but let me see if I can uh, get that to work. Okay. Yeah, the third movement, uh, De Hartmann describes as Rachel's dance. So he has a bit and of who a is reference. Rachel? Rachel from the Bible, you know. The, oh, okay. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, she apparently was very, very beguilingly beautiful and and so it's her her dance and he also uses ukrainian folk music in that so you'll hear that 
in the opening of the piece. Yeah, you can hear that right away. As I said, this uh, is about seven minutes and change, so we don't have time to listen to the whole thing. But uh, Nadia, I know that you uh, also recorded, we found a, a YouTube video of you doing a, a piece by Miroslav Skorik. I, and I think that I have that here, so I can make that all work. Okay. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about this melody before we uh, actually play some of it. So Melody by Miroslav Skorik right now is sort of like a spiritual hymn for Ukraine. Uh, it's a piece that just has become sort of a symbol of yeah. Ukraine's courage and uh, resistance and um, beauty. And um, this piece, I actually performed it um, on San Bernardino Symphony series, where we also performed uh, Invasion and uh, I performed many pieces by Ukrainian composers at that concert. And the Skorik piece, it's uh, it's a piece that was played, uh, you know, when at the beginning of the war, um, when um, Zelensky uh, appealed to U.S. Congress, and there was a video that um, th that they made um, that had this horrific um, footage from Mariupol. And um, it was just an absolutely devastating video. And they used um, this piece, Skorik's Melody, in its uh, orchestral version um, as a background. And since then, it's been played. Um, it's written for many different instruments. It could be played just as an orchestral piece. It has versions for violin and orchestra, cello and orchestra, piano solo, uh, many, many different versions. So it's been played um, just to commemorate Ukraine and to it's like a hymn basically and um it's um kind of like this piece by Sylvester too but um that piece was written for um a film uh, that was about world war ii actually and um so now we're kind of back in, into that whole yeah. world of destruction and uh horrible things happening and death and um so it, it's just very fitting that piece is very fitting for the times so I yeah. uh, I play it I play it as an encore often, or I just start the program with it and just talk about Ukraine. Um, mo like most times that I perform, I I try and include that. Well, let's listen to a little bit of it here if I can get it up and running. Encourage folks as we listen to this a little bit to maybe be asked any questions that you may have for Nadia or for Matt or for both of you. where you recorded this particular video? Oh, this was this was uh, the live concert at San Bernardino Symphony series. Okay. Uh, same concert where I played Invasion. I actually had this painting that's behind me now and other paintings by Ukrainian artists right. um, played on stage. You might even be able to see some of them in the video. Um, so it was, it was a live performance. Yeah, we'll uh, put a link for that. It's on YouTube and uh, we can uh, add that to the to the replay of this video, right? And we'll also uh, add the YouTube video of you both playing the uh, Prosodium by Sylvestrov as well. It's lovely music. Yeah. I'm going to pause it there. Sorry. I feel like I shouldn't be cutting that music off right now, but... <laughs> That's the point. Um, 
I wonder if you have anything else that, that you really want listeners to know about this uh, new piece of Sylvestrov's um, and your collaboration together. Let's start with you, Matt. I think we covered with quite you, a lot. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think, I, I think we covered <laughs> quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I, um, it, thank you for uh, Brad for uh, for hosting us today to, yeah. to share to share this with people and and um, yeah, I, I please for those listening, please share the the track and the video and and uh, and call your Congress people to support Ukraine. Um, it's a critical critical time. You know, two years ago when um, Ukraine was invaded, um, the world thought that that it would fall in a few days. And it's we're two years later, this is a very strong and resilient population and, and nation. And, um, and it's, it, it's extraordinary, but it also painful that they have to live like this for, for such a long time. And, um, you know, the, the U S and the world, has been most of the world has has been incredibly supportive of Ukraine, and I hope that uh, you know politically that that doesn't get in the way of of the continued support. This is a critical time for the country to to keep going and to to persevere in this very important struggle, and um, and we as artists are going to keep keep the music the Ukrainian composers and, and art. We're going to, we're going to do everything we can to, to support and to bring to life this, this music. Yeah. Nadia, do you have anything to add to what Matt was saying? Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's, it's very well said. So call your congressman, just, just do what you can to spread awareness and to make it clear to people how important um, this struggle is, this this tragedy, this tragic war. And um, I mean, I do what I can just through music and through fundraising efforts for humanitarian aid. But I think basically just sharing uh, Ukrainian music, Ukrainian art, uh, stories of people um, from there. Um, ju just so that people don't forget, because it's two years after and people move on and people in Ukraine can't move on. So yeah. um, it's it's very easy to to just kind of brush it aside what's happening. But it's really, really terrible and tragic what's happening there. And for me, of course, I, I can't forget. I talk to my dad every day. I'm very lucky that we have a reception that we are able to talk every day. Um, and he's very lucky that his house hasn't been bombed and blown up um but you know you never know what the next day brings but of course so for me it's uh i'm there every day you know in spirit and you know and i have friends there and um it's just uh it's just heartbreaking but um as i said um in my note about this piece it also conveys hope so it conveys my pain and hope so i'm hoping that with this piece uh we will get just a little closer to victory and to the positive aspect of the music and kind of it will be reflected in life. Absolutely. And I, I would encourage folks, you know, and I said this before to use the uh, track being released today as kind of a starting point for exploring Ukrainian culture and music in particular. Um, I want to thank you both, uh, the wonderful cellist Matt Heimovitz and the wonderful pianist Nadia Spachenko uh, for joining me and talking about this uh, new track by Valentin Silvestrov, the postludium number three that's being released today, as a matter of fact. Thank you both for taking the time and uh, talking to us about this album. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.